Uh, good evening, everybody. I, I hope you've all had a good night so far, and I'm sure everybody enjoyed their meal. I know I certainly did. Um, to start, tonight, Jane has given me the privilege to talk about the charity, and really what all this you see around you is, is about tonight. So many of you won't know me. As Jane said, my name's Harry Carson, and I was one of Henry's friends throughout his short time on this earth. So why is it that I'm up here tonight? Well, it's my first time at the ball. I've just turned 18 this year, as Jane said, as would have Henry. And I'm sure if he had won his battle, you would have bumped into us at the bar earlier on, later on, and probably a few times after that, as young 18-year-olds are prone to do. I often reflect on how fantastic it was to be Henry's friend, and how he affected my life and the lives of his best friends, me and the three other lads here tonight, Cameron, George, and Joe. Henry was a true, child, a true childhood friend whose memory I will treasure throughout my life. And the charity itself has allowed me to keep Henry's, Henry firmly in my thoughts and in my daily life. Back in primary school, me, Henry, and the other lads, our three amig amigos here tonight, were an inseparable group of friends who spent almost every waking hour together. As many of you will fondly remember, Henry was known for his sense of humor, and he was one, indeed one of the funniest people I, will, I have ever known. His one-liners were fab, and he could set us off so easily with his charming wit. Henry could have been seen as the trendsetter of our little group, whether that be due to him having the latest piece of technology that we all envied and followed suit to get, or simply a common interest, such as our fascination with the Pokemon games, all talking gibberish or some sort of foreign language around our parents. Henry was always there for me and was always someone I could really, truly rely on. Whether the problem was big or small, he was always caring and considerate. I remember once I was invited to a sleepover at Henry's. At this time, I was often quite homesick when I stayed out. So after I struggled worryingly through the meal that we sat down to have together, and the time had come to leave, I quickly hid in the toilet to be sick and shed some tears for simply being away from my bed for that night. Nevertheless, Henry, being such a caring soul, consoled me and made me feel better by giving me the courage to stay out that night. He did this again and again until I conquered this stupid fear. But it wasn't stupid to me at the time, and Henry really understood that. Understood that. He always cared about me, so it wasn't stupid to him either. When I was 11 years old, Henry's diagnosis was like shell shock. No true comprehension was possible at that age. No idea about where it could lead, just big news that was very, very difficult to grasp. I remember my first trip to visit Henry in the hospital with Joe, and my first insight to his ordeal was the tablets the doctor had given him for the pain, nearly, probably about an inch long. Back then, I struggled to take one paracetamol, and if I was to admit now, I probably still do. Back then, I was still drinking all the Calpol if I was ever ill. <laughs> Never mind these huge tablets that Henry was having. At that age, I thought Henry's illness would all blow over soon, and he'd be fit and healthy and back in school in no time. Over the following year, Henry did not recover. And the illness progressed so fast and took hold of him so quickly. We still got to see him around the infections, operations, and when he briefly came home and spent a night in his own bed. However, we were always missing part of our group, part of ourselves, and it hurt not to include him in what we were doing. Henry gave me a teddy bear, and I called him Henry the Brave. I took him everywhere just so I could say that Henry had been there with me. It's silly looking back now, but we coped in odd ways that helped us when the real courage was how Henry was fighting this thing that was determined to take him away from everyone that he loved. The hardest thing was finding out that Henry was terminally ill. We found this out two months before Henry's death. Our parents, the parents of the friends that I've mentioned tonight, had found out a few months before, and they had so carefully and considerately with Jane kept the devastating truth from us in order for us to remain ourselves around Henry for his and our own benefits for as long as possible. Finding out that our best friend was going to die was very, very brutal. I felt a choking feeling of mixed emotions from anger and frustration to 
overwhelming sadness and a stubborn disbelief. If it wasn't for the sadness, we probably would have pretended it wasn't real. But it touched everyone in our school classes, in our social clubs, and in our families. Trying to understand it all and find some perspective of what was happening or what life would be like without Henry, one of my best friends was so very difficult. He was such a massive part of my life back then, and it really didn't make sense. We knew he was getting more ill by the day, and we couldn't see him for the risk of infection we may have given him. We were 11, which meant we dipped ourselves in mud most days. And then came the inevitable day. I found out, and it shattered me. It seems unreasonable for life not to stop, and for the world to keep going on around you, when inside I was screaming with loss and anguish, and I was afraid of facing tomorrow without my friend. I couldn't see him before it happened, but I knew he was there, and now he wasn't. Henry's death affected each one of us in so many different ways. A 12-year-old boy, I cried so very much, and it took many, many years to truly accept that Henry was really no longer with us. Not just around the corner, or at home with his cats, or even playing football somewhere. However, I often wonder what Henry would be like now as I'm sure many of you do here tonight. What would our group be like with his presence and his incredible sense of humor? What would he be studying at school? He always loved maths and science, and I'm sure he'd be excelling in both because he really was an incredibly bright boy. One thing I'm sure of is that Henry would have been a fantastic young man, out making a difference in this world, which leads me on to say this is the real re reason that we are here tonight, to make that difference in his name as he isn't here to do it for himself. This thought, again, is what reminds us of all the good that the charity and, of course, Jane has herself done for so many and will hopefully continue to do so for many, many years to come. Overall, the charity has raised over 230,000 pounds worth of funds and has helped over 220 families, 120 simply this year alone. One of the great triumphs of the charity that I am really proud to talk about has been the setting up of a storytelling project in the Great North Children's Hospital of the RVI in Newcastle. The project consists of Shelley, the charity's storyteller, going to the hospital and reading the children a story either with their parents going out to space for a quick coffee or a bit of time to themselves and a few tears in the toilet, whatever. The project has been a huge success and became a massive hit on the ward. So much so that within two months of its creation, the wards asked if it could become more frequent, which it has moving from once to twice a week. A simple story has a great impact upon the children. And if the, ch if the child likes the book, then the project will give them their very young copy. The vital work that Henry Dancer Days does to support families throughout the region is greatly appreciated by those it affects. In fact, one mother wrote a letter to Jane thanking her for the donation that the charity provided. It read, Dear Jane, I would just like to thank you and your charity for supporting my son and our family through, its, through this tough time. My son, Kean, who's 12, has just recently been diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma and has just finished round three of his intensive chemotherapy. Your very kind donation has bought him a new laptop and a 3DS so he can pass the time away in hospital as his mobility is so limited at the moment. Many thanks from a very appreciative family. You're doing an amazing job and I'm very sure your son is very proud of you. Kind regards, Kelly Williams. You see, it's not just the laptops and the 3DSs that are supplied. It's not just the time for a story which allows the parents to get themselves together or a breath quick sigh of relief or a cry out of sight. Sometimes it's the paid gas bill or the petrol money to and from the hospital, something that takes away the stresses of normal life that scratch away at the resolve of suffering families. 
This cannot be done without the help of the sponsors and donations from lots of people, and I'd like to talk about this a little. Henry Dancer Days has set up a corporate partnership scheme and is delighted to have representatives of two partners here from this evening, Blue Kangaroo Design and Max Security and Fire, which are both sitting at tables six and seven. So could we please just give them a very big round of applause. very appreciated what you do to the charity and I hope that for many years to come you will keep this strong partnership with Jane in Henry's name. Jane has asked me to announce a new partner tonight, the Harland's accountants. Glyn Davison and his team have gone the extra mile since the charity was formed, offering business advice, fundraising, providing sponsorship and giving office space all free of charge. Without them, Henry's Answer Days would not have been able to help as many people as they have. Jane is eternally grateful to them for all of their support and for now joining as a gold corporate partner. Glyn and his wife, as Boys Brigade leaders in Lanchester, saw Henry progress through the Boys Brigade and Vicky even nominated Henry for a President's Award with which he was presented during his illness. As a small token of gratitude, I am honoured to present to them, on behalf of Jane and the charity, their gold partnership certificate. There are so many of you here tonight, possibly all, who have helped this charity in some other way than attending this lovely place for this wonderful soiree. You all look dashing and sophisticated, by the way, as I may do myself. <laughs> uh, however, after a few more drinks, this may change for many of us. <laughs> so, to finish, the charity is obviously very important to me, and all the good that can be done in Henry's name can benefit so many people. I would personally like to thank you all for being here tonight to help Henry dance today's and I hope you could support them tonight with what has been planned, and I hope you can continue to support them in the future. I say this right from the heart, that this means so much to me and my friends, and I know that Henry would want to thank you too. I hope you all have a fantastic night, and God bless Henry Dancer.